So this is our first lesson in forces and it's called recognizing interactions. Um, you have used the word forces before, but physicists are leaning more towards calling forces are actually interactions because you need to have two things in order to have an interaction. So if we read through the instructions, um, in this activity, the purpose is to recognize when two objects are interacting and when they are not. So that's all we're gonna do is try to learn when two objects are interacting. Now, when two objects influence each other, we say that they are interacting and the effect of this interaction can vary depending on the circumstances. Sometimes the motion is changed. That's usually what we're looking at because um, this is the force and motion section but other times the shapes of one or more objects are changed and we will look at that as well. Um, an example is when a spring is compressed or stretched. Um, quite often both the motion and the shape of objects are affected by the interaction. Um, even though we may not see the change in shape, um, doesn't mean that it's not there. So there are three parts to this activity. First part, we're gonna specify whether or not pairs of objects are inter interacting and how they influence each other. The second part, we're going to examine the interaction during specified periods. And in the third set, we're going to explore the interaction on an environment in which the object exists. So remember that you are going through this as your group um, and you're gonna stop and discuss and then type in your answers. So for each of the situations, A1 through A3, we're going to indicate if the pair of objects are interacting. We're going to indicate how the object interacts the other, for example, shape, motion, or both, and then answer any questions about the interaction. All right, so A1, a water balloon is set on a spring that is one meter off the ground, and you want to consider the water balloon and the spring. So first question, are the water balloon and the spring interacting? Discuss. And then what is your evidence um, should be part of your discussion. Second question is how does each influence the other? And so that's what we're looking at. Are they changing sh shape, motion, or both? Um, so water balloon set on a spring one meter off the ground. Second situation, a child stands on a wooden plank joining two large boulders on opposite sides of the brook. Consider just the child and the plank. That's all you're looking at is the interaction between the child and the plank. So are the child and the plank interacting with each other? And as part of your discussion, talk about what's your evidence. Second question is how does, influence, how does each influence the other? So shape, motion, both. Third situation. A block sits at rest on a horizontal table. Consider just the block and the table. So are the block and the table interacting? And again, in your discussion, talk about your evidence with, that you're using to determine whether or not they're interacting. Second, how does each influence the other? Again, think about shape or motion or both. Okay, more questions. In situation A1, if the spring were to suddenly disintegrate, what would happen to the water balloon? And again, you're looking at shape and motion. Situation A2 is the child interacting directly with the boulders. And then with what object is the child interacting directly? So what's your evidence for that? Okay, lastly, in A6, in what ways are the spring, the plank, and the table the same? And finally, how are they different? All right, part two. Um, consider the following situation. A baseball is thrown by the pitcher and then hit by the batter. So we've got the ball going in to the bat. There are three different time periods and we wanna indicate whether or not the ball and the bat are interacting, indicate how the ball influences the bat and indicate how the bat influences the ball, then answer the questions below. So the ball has left the pitcher's hand but has not yet arrived at the batter. So are the ball and the bat interacting? 
What's your evidence? How does the ball influence the bat? Remember, this is while the ball has, after the ball has left the pitcher's hand, but not yet arrived at the batter. What's your evidence? And then how does the bat influence the ball? Again, what's your evidence? Now, next situation, you're going to look at when the ball is in contact with the bat. So the ball and the bat are in contact with each other. It's very brief time, but they're in contact with each other. So are the ball and the bat interacting? What's your evidence? How does the ball influence the bat? Be very specific. Remember, we're looking at shape and motion. And then C, how does the bat influence the ball? Again, looking at shape and motion. Now, the ball is in the air. So this is after the ball has been hit by the bat, it's in the air and heading straight towards the left fielder. Are the ball and the bat interacting with each other? What's your evidence? How does the ball influence the bat? So again, shape, motion, both, neither. How does the bat influence the ball? Shape, motion, both, neither. Okay. Do the bat and the ball need to be in contact to interact with each other? So in other words, to change shape or change motion. So explain. B4 is a pretty important question. So. Okay, so kind of the bottom line is, is that the bat and the ball have to be in contact to interact with each other. Um, after the ball has left the bat, it doesn't matter how hard I swing the bat or in what direction I, I swing the bat, I cannot affect the motion of the ball. So they have to be in contact with each other. So think of some examples of pairs of objects that can interact without being in contact with each other. So things that can interact without being in contact with each other. All right, um, so we're gonna look at two objects that don't have to be in contact with each other, but still influence each other, and those are magnets. So we've got magnets with opposite poles are facing each other. Poles are called north and south, so they are oriented north and south attract each other. So each magnet is connected to a spring, which in turn is attached firmly to a wall the magnets are placed with opposite poles facing each other and are released. So are the two magnets interacting? So they're not touching, are they interacting? Explain. And describe how the magnets influence each other. Okay, now each magnet is connected to a piece of string which is attached firmly to a wall. The magnets are placed with opposite poles facing each other and released. All the surfaces are frictionless. So are the two magnets interacting? I want to explain and give your evidence. And you might want to compare the situation to um, C1 to see how it's the same or different. And then B, describe how the magnets influence each other. So does changing a string for a spring, does that affect the magnetic interaction? That's what you're discussing. Okay, one magnet is connected to a spring, which is attached to the ceiling, and the second magnet is placed on the floor with opposite poles facing each other. So are the two magnets interacting? Explain, you know, give evidence. Think about how this is different than the situation from which they're going horizontally when you give evidence and talk about are they interacting. And then two, describe how the two magnets influence each other. Again, any differences or similarities between the first two cases. Okay, so hopefully you had good discussion. Um, you can stop the video or make sure that you submit the Ed puzzle, and then you'll do the reflections on your own.